morning lovely people. How are you today? I hope you're well. Oh, you've joined me on quite a warm day. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, it's lovely. I think it means just go a little bit more slowly than usual. <laughs> slowly, that's all I've been doing recently. So, a um, few bits and bobs to get on with today. Of course, tomato cares will be one of the jobs. Tomato cares, tying in the squash and tying in the cukes. That's a given once a week. Uh, the cukes have been going mad. Uh, I've literally just picked five now. I've given a couple to Mark and a couple to another neighbour. And where have I put mine? <laughs> I've got one for myself somewhere. And there are two which have got really, really whopping quite quickly. So I shall leave them be and they are now earmarked as my seed savers because the plants they're on are beautiful, healthy looking plants. The fruits themselves look absolutely perfectly developed in sort of size and shape. So taking all that into consideration, I think to myself, oh yes, you've got some good genes. I'm going to keep you. So yes, all the normal cares to start the day. Then... I've got this, this and my funnel from home. This is going to be, well it is, my garlic spray. The reason I've got my funnel is to get it out of the jam jar and into my spritzy bottle. So the spritzy bottle is going to be used for aspirin spray on the tomatoes and then the garlic spray. Because about, when was it? A handful of days ago when I had my royal visit, more of that in a second, um, yeah I noticed I'd got my first bit of black fly in a couple of my bush beans, my sort of little um, where was rocking core, in my bird of rocking core, and on one of my climbers, on one of my gigantes. So I'm going to use my garlic spray. Uh, I used it last year, well it's what I, it's all I ever used to deal with black fly on the beans and last year I only had one plant one of my bean plants and that's across climbing and bush beans the minute I saw the black fly I did a garlic spray it dealt with it and it, I didn't have it spread anywhere else and now I know this year a lot of people have had a black fly nightmare uh, loads of people, so loads of people on my site, other friends who garden, other YouTubers that I've seen have had an issue. <clears throat> so I feel like I've got off lightly and I can't help but wonder, is that because I'm so late with everything this year? It's one of those things, isn't it? Um, I was just saying to another friend how, you know, it seems like everywhere I look, people are harvesting beans already and I'm not. And that's a bit like, mm. but actually I think my garden is always later to come than everyone else. It's partly because I do quite a lot of direct sowing. I don't bring things on in a greenhouse, what have you. But anyway, yes, that's the black fly situation. And I think, like I said, I think I've probably not had it quite as badly as other people. Uh, because... By the time I was planting my beans, everyone else has dealt with their horrible infestations. So, that's going to get sprayed. So, ah, how I make it. <sighs> Couldn't be more simple. Last night, before I went to bed, I just rough chopped, I think it was about three cloves of garlic, put them in a saucepan, uh, poured, covered them with hot water. It wasn't boiling, it was, it was hot. And that just kind of allows all those beautiful oils out of the garlic, all that gorgeous stinkiness. Leave it with a lid on the pan overnight, leave it to cool, so it's really stinky. I mean, it's, you're right, poppykins. It's a nice stink, it's a garlic stink. It's funny though, because I got up this morning, I went in the kitchen, and the smell of garlic made me start thinking about my supper already, it made me hungry. Uh, yeah, so then strained off, so it's, it's perfectly cool. It's going to be sort of warm sun temperature because it is quite sunny out there. Poppy doesn't know where to go because the shed is still 
a little bit of chaos. So the last time you saw me down, whoop, down here was when I was having my tidying session. Oh, I did enjoy that. And then subsequent to that, I had my lovely visit from Richard and Paul for Paul's birthday. And you know, it's one of the great joys of having a garden, of having that little bit of outside space, especially, you know, for all of us who live in flats in cities where we don't have our own gardens. The joy of obviously being able to grow my own veggies, wonderful, but having a space to congregate with friends and just relax. Oh, it was wonderful. It's lovely, all those occasions, they build such lovely, happy memories into the garden. It's gorgeous. So, <clears throat> yeah, it was very much a, a sort of a homespun affair. I found some bunting tucked around my shed that I'd forgotten about. So, of course, that got hung up. Grabbed a few extra spare tables, sort of joined tables together so that we could have... Um, we could have there were quite a few of us and it meant that we could gather but socially distanced flowers from the garden to decorate the table everybody's chair had a nice blanket on it so that if it should turn chilly no one need to feel the chill everyone had a blanket all the food was um obviously was homemade mostly seasonal i did a bean salad which was using last year's beans. So chickpeas, it was the last of my chickpeas. Um, some Coco Sophie. I did a, a, a broad bean, potato and red onion salad. Because obviously that's what's available at the moment. Mark made a beautiful, oh so yummy, quiche that was new potatoes and rocket. And then Mon made a beautiful birthday cake. It was a lemon cake, but the icing and the sort of the filling in the middle was, well, it, there were black currants in it. And I think what she'd done was make a sort of coolie to begin with from the black, black currants. And then it wasn't like a butter icing. It was almost like a butter icing. It had golden syrup in it. It was beautiful. It was all combined. So this sort of shocking pink icing, pinky purple. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, that was it. It was very, it was a very simple, happy affair, just basically hanging out with beautiful people on a beautiful day, in a beautiful setting, and aren't we lucky to have that? Oh, yes, bliss. Right, is it time to... Can you hear this one? <laughs> purring away oh yeah just before I go into the garden sorry I didn't mean to whistle on so long but um it was something I was thinking about the other day after I'd used my slug defense stuff which turns out it's calcium silicate which is the same thing that goes in litter boxes I hope you haven't been using that as a litter tray I haven't checked yet um so I was talking about it being wildlife friendly and at the time I was saying that's not quite right because it's not exactly friendly. So I think it is quite important to differentiate between wildlife friendly and wildlife safe. And that's the difference. So the that slug defence barrier is wildlife safe. In other words, it's not going to harm wildlife. The difference between safe and friendly, of course, if something's wildlife friendly, you know, we're that should mean things like thinking about providing food, providing habitat, providing shelter, providing nest building materials. That's friendly. It's friendly when it's actively sort of sort of encouraging and promoting and supporting wildlife. Whereas wildlife safe, well, it's not going to do anything for the wildlife, but it's not going to harm the wildlife. So there we go. So we need to be thinking wildlife friendly as much as we can. Right, where should we start? I think let's go and get this spray applied. I'll show you my yucky black fly. So this is my Gigantes that has had, it's got quite a lot on there. Now, you're not gonna be able to tell because of we're quite close, but this Gigantes is, 
a foot, maybe a foot high. The rest of them on this little section, so these were all planted at the same time, the ones on the other poles are they're up to the top and they're running along the top of the poles now. So this is one of the issues with the black fly. It just it saps all the strength from the plant. Um, you know, hopefully if you catch it in time and if the plant is big enough anyway, then hopefully there's enough of the plant there for it to recover. But yeah, you can see how massively stunted this one is. Now it may be that it might have been stunted anyway, uh, because there is such a huge difference, but almost without doubt the black fly will have contributed to that. So I'm literally just going to, I've got to say this, don't have pen and ink, <laughs> as my granddad would say, it don't have pen and ink. <laughs> my granddad was a Londoner. Um, yeah, just give it all a good spritzing wherever you see them. Pooey! <laughs> of course, I managed to spill some on my hands as well, so yeah, I stink of garlic too. There are worse things to smell of, aren't there? Okay, so that's the Gigantis. Now, when I noticed this the other day, I had a quick, quick look around. Uh, and it looks like the rest of the climbers were okay. But what I will do is I'll go now and check everything really thoroughly. Get this sprayed on, get these black fly nicked in the bud, as it were. Ah, oh, let me show you over in the rock and core where it's, it's looking quite nasty. I'm hoping you can see on here. The, they like to start in the top, in the juicy sort of growing tips. But then they'll very quickly yark, colonise the whole plant. And as I was mentioning with the Gigantes, this is going to sap, this is going to sap the strength out of it and really stunt the bean growth. Oh, I'm really spraying myself. Now, while you're doing this, you could also at the same time sort of run your thumb and finger up and down to sort of squish and move them off. I'm just going to spray for now. So my beans are ready dressed with a nice garlic dressing. Now that I'm down here, oh I've just seen a ladybird, good girl. Now that I'm down here I'm seeing my first few are ready to pick I think. Let's have a look. Indeed I have my first few ready. Now you can see at this stage, uh, if I turn it sideways, can you make that out? The beans are barely formed in the pods but this is a bean that I eat for the pod rather than the bean. So at this stage, oh my goodness, it's going to be so beautiful, so tender. Oh yes, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. A little handful on this plant. So I'll probably have those four off and that one I'll leave to develop a bit more. But this is the perfect stage to get them at. Don't let them develop too much more because as the beans get fatter and fatter in the pod, the pod's going to get tougher and tougher. Um, it gets to a stage where it's so tough, you just want to have the beans out instead. But yes, I'm delighted to have my first little pick of beans today. What a happy place. So another lovely little job for me to do today. Now that I've been around all my beans to check for black fly, that's kind of pretty much it, give them all a good squirt, is where some of them have finally got to the tops of their poles and I've trained them along the middle. I can now start to pinch out, oops, you need to come around this way, pinch out their growing tips because I don't want them to get way, way taller because <laughs> I won't be able to pick. That's one thing. But also, um, by oh, pinching them out now, hopefully that will encourage some more side shoots. If I get some more side shoots, I might get some more flower trusses. And we all know what flower trusses bring. So yes, I've just pinched back to a leaf. 
I could probably reach a little bit higher, but that will do. Um, and then this one. Let's go. Some have obviously got there much more quickly than others. Generally, the gigantes always romp away. So, hopefully, over the next few weeks, the trail of twos will catch up to. It's funny, I'm coming to you, this is just the end of July. I think it'll be August by the time you see this, only 1st or 2nd of August. But I always say that with my garden, uh, it would be very easy to be paranoid looking at images of other folks' gardens in sort of late June and even into, you know, late June, beginning of July. Everything looks so great and abundant and lush and my garden always seems really to lag behind. But... I know from experience from over the years that my garden really only comes into its own in August. By the middle of August, I will be surrounded by green and veggies will be coming. They will be coming. And I love it. I love that point of the year when it's, it's at its most lush, most abundant, before we go into September and we slide into that fade of autumn colours. Right, and I've noticed for one of me, I don't think you see it from that, one of my Amish pasties has gone for a bit of a walk. So I think, do all my beans and then I'm going to move in to do my tomato cares. And now I'm in the potato patch. The two rows of new potatoes. All the tops have gone over now. Uh, now normally I would harvest these over the next three or four weeks as and when I need them. Slightly different this year. I'm having them all out today. The reason being, as you know from a couple of videos back, really paranoid about the brassica situation this year. Whew, it's hard to think of a winter grub on such a hot, beautiful day. Yeah, I'm really quite worried about that situation. And I've got that handful of beautiful purple sprouting broccoli from Paul. I've got a few of my own, which hopefully are surviving the ones that I put on the deck the other day I just want to get them in now I want to get them in and give them a chance to get growing so potatoes out purple sprouting broccoli in now where I got my two rows of spuds in the trench in the middle um, all summer where I've had things that I've started in pots that haven't germinated so various trays of brassicas or beans that have germinated and then been decimated all of that spent compost I've then been chucking in the middle of this trench I also chucked in here all the compost both the bought and the communal compost from the potatoes in the grow bag that's also in this trench here so that now as I'm digging my spuds out that's going to get incorporated a bit I mentioned as well there's a couple of there's a couple of bits of bindweed in here so I've got my <laughs> trash bucket yeah I tend to use this bucket for gathering glass rocks and the weeds that I don't want to put in my compost so they'll come out at the same time I then also have um, I've retained a couple of bags of compost so that once this is all planted up give it a really good watering I'm going to use some more compost on the top as a mulch and I might even see today if there's anything in my compost bin ready to use as a mulch today if not not to worry because that compost bin stuff can then go into my two onion beds when the onions come out so arr, let's go looking for treasure I didn't wear the right shoes today because <laughs> I'd forgotten that this was the plan. Anyway, not to matter, not to worry. Gosh, this ground is baked hard and dry. I'm not going to bore you with all the potatoes because we've seen that already but for example this bindweed 
there. There's another bit there. We'll trace that back a bit. As I was mentioning, um, when was I mentioning it? A few videos back. I will never, I'll never eradicate it completely. <coughs> but each time I see it, try to get out as much as possible and just keep weakening it so that when it does come up hopefully it's less strong voila, than my plants oh I'm going to be to Australia before I get this one out yeah let me get on with this because it's going to be I think it's going to be another hoffy poffy grunty one Craggy, that was hard work getting those spuds out I've had a slight change of plan with that bed today. Oh, it's that thing, isn't it, as gardeners. We best laid plans and all that, but, but remaining flexible. So it was really hard to get the spuds out. The ground is really, really dry and baked. I'm pretty sure I've left half the harvest down there. Now, the change of plan is that it's becoming really hot suddenly, and the next two days we're due Gary was just telling me that by Friday we might be up to 35. Um, so I'm thinking, ooh, transplant shock for these precious, precious brassicas. I'd rather leave them dotted in shady parts of the garden in their little pots still, just for a couple of days. But also, uh, with the potato bed, uh, I haven't got the right shoes on today. I've got me crappy old Converse, me beat up old Converse on. I need to come back in my sturdy garden shoes and I need to fork over the whole bed again properly uh, to look A, because I don't want to miss the random spuds in terms of me having them to eat, and B, I don't really want them in that bed, which next year will be the celery bed. I don't want them random potatoes popping up and getting in the way of my celery and hopefully fennel next year. Um, yes, so I'm going to hold off on doing that for a couple of days, let the worst of this heat pass, then come back, give that bed another fork through, whilst I, oh I might do it today actually, no, yes, no, <laughs> we're not due any rain, this is part of the, the planning problem. Um, what I will do is I'll give it a really good dressing now of the little chicken pellets and when I do my watering shortly I, I'll give that bed a really good soak just to melt the chicken pellets and then when I do fork it through in a couple of days that'll help to incorporate the chicken manure prior to planting the brassicas but I have got a, oh, it's heavy <sighs> I've got a really nice harvest. I mean, they're such beautiful. This, I'm thinking now in terms of neonates, that's two neonates. That's, that's seven and a half, eight kilos there. What's that in poundage? 14 pounds? Yeah, it's two neonates. Um, this will easily keep me going through August and September. By the time these are finished, I can start having the first of my main crops out and I've just remembered something. You won't remember this probably, but when I planted the main crops, right on the end of the row, uh, it's back to that thing I was saying earlier in the year about this company I've been using for years that I'm not going to use anymore. The main crop potatoes they sent, when I was setting them out to chit, I was thinking, this doesn't seem like very many spuds this year. Normally I have enough for two rows of eight, so 16, plus leftovers either to give away or I'll keep them, oh, can you hear my gym chimes? I'll, I'll keep, say, I mean, it's in the past, I'm sure it's been sort of 24, 25 seed spuds I've had. I chip them, leave them in the shed, get get all of them planted give a few away and variable is one or two left over which means then a few weeks later if if one of the ones i've planted shows no signs of coming up i plant it anyway back to what i was saying that i've just remembered for today 
this year there were only 15. I can't remember where I've got a row of eight and seven or a row of seven and six. Either way, when I did the mains, there was space at the end. I had one little space. So I put a new potato. I put one of my anyas, my gorgeous, gorgeous anyas. Um, so I might pop over there and have that out now as well. Actually, no, it's not in the way. What am I talking about? Leave it, Vivi. So, yeah, what was that? I had the anyas. I did have, I had two rows of eight, so it was 16. The spare. 17 and then the two spare that went in the grow bag it's 18 19 it's not a lot is it when you oh excuse me i'm gonna sneeze oh excuse me oh two that's the sun it's so bright it's making me sneeze anyway um yeah i'm delighted i'm absolutely delighted with those they're beautiful i mean they're such oh <laughs> not raw so it's one of those things isn't it um <laughs> i don't always have the biggest harvest the most pretty harvest the best harvest i don't care you know i don't care what my harvest looks like in comparison to someone else i'm not that other person i'm me i grow my stuff to eat all i'm interested in is can i grow enough to keep me going for the whole year and i do also today I've had a little pick. Well, Lord, the first of my there do rock and call. I mean, it's just a little handful. I'll show you, just a handful. That's all. But that's just from two bushes. This is just the beginning. They will start coming like mad now. And what's great this year because there was a whole row that I forgot to sew. <laughs> I was thinking. They, these are taking a long time to come up. I hadn't sewn a whole row. So I sewed a whole nother row, plus plugged a couple of gaps with seeds about four weeks after my initial sewing, which means I'll have a nice succession this year as well. As I was mentioning when I was showing you the black flag, urgh, these I eat for the whole pod. So for the next four to six weeks I'll be eating these fresh probably every other day uh, there will be enough for me to freeze quite a few portions too great but you can't beat them fresh they're, I'm always going on about they've got this beautiful waxiness to them gorgeous and actually they go really beautifully with the Anya Obviously with our new potatoes, our salad potatoes, we want that waxiness. We want them to hold that waxiness for our salads. Or if you're having, you know, whether you're having them as a hot salad or a cold salad, beautiful. This bird of rock and core waxiness really complements them. But of course, you've also got the slight crunch with the bird of rock and core. So all I will do with these is chop them up, steam them really lightly, maybe only steam them for three or four minutes. The spuds will only take a 10 minute steam. Chuck them in a big bowl together. Dollop of mayo, whoa, gorgeous. Possibly, oh I know, I think maybe one of those little, um, little cut and, not cut and come again, the little leeks I've done for summer, for harvesting over the summer rather than over winter. Chop that up. That, again, that'll be just a sort of a two minute steam, if that, uh, for a really yummy, waxy, but crunchy, yummy in my tummy salad. So, oh, and also, which end was which? This, it's a courgette. Can you see it? Look, a ribbed courgette. I have totally forgotten the name of this already. I traded for this this morning. I swapped a cucumber for this. I feel like I got the better bit of the bargain. This is one that um, Mark and Mon have grown this year. Oh, it's got some fancy pants Italian name. I can't remember. It's a heritage variety. Um, but yeah, really, can you see right at the top there? Really quite deeply ribbed. I mean, it looks somewhere between a squash, a marrow, and a courgette, doesn't it? But apparently they taste very much of courgette. So with that, oh, 
I was thinking about doing a courgette and potato and ooh, maybe a bit of blue cheese soup because I've got a tiny bit of blue cheese that needs easing up. I might do that but only with half of it because it's new to me, a new veg to me. I always think it's really nice to try these things unadulterated first time around so you can really get a sense of that veggie's taste. So oh I'm not sure how I'll do this. Yeah I might reserve half of it for sampling and with the half for sampling I will do, I'll try some of it just steamed, I'll try a couple of slices sautéed, just a little drop of olive oil, I might try a couple of slices if I do mm, I don't think I'm going to have the oven on this week, but if I was going to have the oven on, it's one of those things where I might try and roast a couple of bits as well. I think that's a really um, canny thing to do whenever you're trying a new veg. Try it on its own in all sorts of different ways. Oh, <laughs> is that a honeybee? I didn't quite get I don't know whether it was a honeybee or a wasp. So small. Um, yeah, try things, you know, steamed, fried, roasted, baked, however you want to put it grilled what do you call it in america grilling Br broiling is that what you call it anyway you know what i mean try it on its own in a variety of ways you might find a that you don't like that vegetable at all <laughs> so you know if you want to try a new veg and you've got a friend growing it ask them really nicely if you could just have one bean or one spot or whatever to try try it in a few ways on its own see which way best suits you in terms of the texture you know are you someone who still likes a bit of crunch do you like things really soft and creamy and mushy um, and also having it on its own you get a really good sense of its own taste and then you can start to think about the other veg you could combine it with because you know how your other veg taste already <laughs> yay so, right, what's next? I think just a bit of a sit for a minute. Getting those spots out <laughs> surprised me. Oh my goodness. I feel, I feel at the moment like I do in March each year. You know, sort of the big work in the garden starts after a sort of winter of hibernation and you don't feel garden fit. <laughs> It's the end of July, I still don't feel garden fit for goodness sakes. Oh, I'm gonna have to do something about that. Yes, never mind. Totally waffling now. I am going to go and do a bit of tinkering. Uh, get stuck in with the tomatoes, squash, everything, everything needs doing and seeing too. So I'm gonna do that, then a jolly good water. And then think about making the next list for the next time I'm here. I was, just to say, it's supposed to be a quickie today, I was thinking about doing some reseeding today. So I've got some salad leaves that have gone to seed. They need to come out and I want to reseed. Got a couple of gaps in, say, the parsnip bed. I want to do some seeding there. The perpetual spinach is looking great, so I'm thinking, yeah, let's do loads of perpetual spinach dotted around the place. And then the other thing I was going to do, one last, one last go, carrots. So right in the top bed, under the lily, um, and next to where I've got the cauliflowers and the kale, there's that little strip that had lentils in, which I reseeded with salads, but they're not doing anything. It's just been too dry and too hot. What I'm thinking is trying the carrots again there, but putting them in the shade tunnel. And because we are going to be so hot and dry in the next few days, I'm going to have to come to water pretty much every day anyway. Not necessarily for the whole garden, but where I've still got a few things in pots like the brassicas, like the newly seeded trays of fennel and brassicas, etc. So if I'm going to have to be here to water those bits anyway, give the carrots a go and keep them watered, I might do. I'll keep you posted if I do. Right, on that note, that's more than enough. I need to just sit back for a few minutes. So until I see you next time, 
what's going to be the next time? Oh, well, I think I should give you a whole a tour of the whole garden, see how we're looking at the beginning of August, because it is just starting to begin to get there. Oh, and my first tomato is turning red. <laughs> Until then, please look after yourselves, look after each other. Enjoy this beautiful weather if you've got it. But don't go too mad in it because it is really quite warm. See you soon.